Well, hello everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. We've just started the uh, the broadcast of the event. We still have a few more minutes before the top of the hour before we get started. Uh, so thank you to those that have already connected. Uh, sit back and uh, just kind of take a few minutes and we'll get started here very shortly. Well, hello, hello, everyone. Excuse me. Welcome to our May webinar with computer aided technology. My clock just ticked to 11 a.m. Pacific time. So it is the top of the hour, which means it's time to get started today. So my name is Chris Dubuque. I'm one of the application engineering managers with uh, CATI. I mentioned Pacific time. I happen to be out in our Portland, Oregon office. Uh, online with me today is our presenter, Don Glasky. He is the manager of our CAM services with CATI. Now, before I hand everything over to Don, uh, I'll just mention a few housekeeping items. Number one, this webcast is being recorded. Uh, we will make it available to watch through GoToWebinar, so you can basically sign up and you can watch it again, get a link to it. Now, because of the recording, I have everyone's audio muted. So please keep yourselves muted so the recording does not pick up any background uh, audio, background sound, what have you. Um, we will have some time to cover some Q&A once Don gets through his presentation. So if you have any questions, please use the, the question and answer panel in GoToWebinar. Uh, just direct them to me, Chris. I will take a look at those and direct everything to Don once he wraps up with everything. If there's anything else you need, you could also use the chat. You know, they both work the same way. Everything will get to me and I can take a look at that. 
So with all of that said, I am going to step aside. I'm going to mute myself and pass everything over to Don. So Don, please take it away. Thanks, Chris. Welcome, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about how you can program parts faster inside a feature-based cam like SolidWorks Cam and CamWorks. So if you can see what I'm sharing here on my screen to the left, that is essentially settings or steps that you need to do uh, to program a part on the operation-based side of CAN. And the feature-based side is on the right-hand side. So notice there's there's more on the left-hand side than it is on the right-hand. So we're gonna talk a little bit about all the automation that gets involved with feature-based CAM and then how the comparison between the two are. Um, so I'm gonna go here to, Okay, so part of automatic feature recognition, what it does inside SolidWorks Cam and Cameras is it's able to organize, able to recognize automatically setups. So we can recognize multiple setups um, and then it reduces programming time. I'm not picking my setups. Um, I'm going through and letting this thing find the setups for me. If it finds setups I don't like, it doesn't do that at times. Uh, maybe that, that's not my intention. I can easily delete them and, and move them to another uh, setup if I want to. But more and more often than not, you're using the setup that it's, that it's recognizing for you. Okay, the fully integrated CAD CAM, which SolidWorks CAM and CAMWorks are integrated fully into inside SolidWorks, is you know the seamless integration inside SolidWorks. Your data is stored with the file, so your tool, your tools, um, oh, sorry, your your operations and tool paths live with your file. Only people that see that is if they have the CAM, any of the CAM add-ins turned on either SolidWorks CAM or CAMWorks. Um, engineers don't see any of that, uh, or whoever's just doing the design work. They update automatically, since they're associative, since they're linked to the, the CAD model, they do automate, uh, update automatically when there's a CAD change. Um, so there's only one file to manage. Commonly when you're, you're going out into the shop floor when there's an issue of a revision change, it's usually because the print's out of date with, with the 3D model. And, the, the one source of uh, truth is usually going back to the 3D CAD model to find out what the part should actually been made at because somehow in the process, someone can get the right and work instructions based on what the CAD model got changed. So we're gonna talk more about feature-based as well. Feature-based is built off of holes, pockets, slots, perimeters, bosses, that's features to us in CAM. So we can have um, settings linked to irregular pockets differently than we can to circular pockets. Lead in, lead out, step the cut, whatever you want to do um, for that step over. However, you want to control that, we can make that instead of just per operation, like a rough mill, we can actually link it to the feature as well. Different and even the, the size of the feature, even the size of the material, or sorry, the, the type of material as well to do that. So, when we get into the talk about auto feature recognition, what it really does is we get in here, we're able to auto recognize in mill parts and turn parts. Just showing you an example here. So you can capture and reuse your, your your machining practices. So when we get into this, I'll talk a little bit more about it. It's set up at a at a base level of here are what your rules are at, and then you can modify those rules to however you machine. So essentially that's where we get about reuse best practices. So you can change it to your default, you can create your own strategies if you want to, uh, based on what you're trying to do and the rules that you apply to them and recall them at any time or make them a default. Okay. So here's just some of the, just a real quick of what um, auto feature recognition happened on a turn part and a mill part. Okay, it's going through and it's finding face features on the one on the left-hand side, which is your turn, your groove, your ODs. And on the other side, it's finding pockets, holes, slots on the mill side of things. Okay, so I'm gonna jump out of that and I'm gonna jump into SolidWorks here. Okay. Okay, so here's a part. Okay, it's got some holes, it's got some pockets in it, right? We're just gonna machine on the top side. Um, I'm just gonna talk about this one here. So inside for me already, having a part, I already have a default machine picked. Um, it's been set to there, it's gonna, I have default tools that I wanna use here as well. And then from here, when I create features in here, so this is my feature tree for the, for CamWorks, you know, or SolidWorks Cam, and then, I'm gonna go ahead and generate features from this based on rules that are inside the technology database. And then we'll get back to this. I'm just opening it up here real quick. 
here's where I notice where my machine is, here's where my tool list is. You can create multiple machines in here, multiple tool lists, tool lists, and then also we'll get into the rules that we have inside here as well. Okay, I'm just gonna minimize this for now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and there's options you can apply for uh, the different things you wanna find automatically if for features. So if I go here and look at mill features, for extract machinable features, it's gonna find things that I tell it to find, okay? I can turn them all on, I can turn some on, I can turn one on and just do holes first or do whatever I'm doing, okay? So I'm just gonna cancel that for now. And I'm gonna go ahead and do extract machinable features and let it find my setup. I'm gonna go ahead and let it go through there. It's gonna find some items, okay? So it found a setup here, okay? And then it found a setup here. That's just, I'm just gonna get rid of that. I don't want that because that's just more for branding for me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. And what I'm gonna concentrate is on this top piece for now. So here it found my mill part setup. Okay, so from there, it found a regular a rectangular slot and a regular slot, another regular slot, and it also found a rectangular in this irregular, and then it found holes, okay, and some taps. So what I want to talk about is, well, how did it find that kind of, how did it find those things? So it went through and it looked and it recognized this first one here. And if I actually in, edit that definition of the geometry itself or, or the, uh, of the feature, it recognized that face, it picked that face. And then if I go in here to look at it and I go to end condition, it recognized that it was, and used a rough finish because I have my settings set up to, to do everything as a rough and a finish, okay? I have other options I can choose from and change them to right here if I want to, before I generate any operations or tool paths. I can change them to other ones. These are the ones that are already loaded inside SolidWorks, Cam and, and CamWorks. I can create my own strategies as well, or save it back to one that already exists as a default selection, okay? And then notice it picked the blind here, so it's got this here. And then there was no island, so it didn't detect any islands or anything like that. So for me to do this manually or, or interactively, like, um, like operation-based people are, are used to doing, um, this is my setup, okay? So from here, what usually you do is you end up picking what you wanna do first. So I'll go here to, um, to the mill parts up and I'll right click here and I'll go to an FX operation and I'll pick a rough mill, okay? So I'm gonna pick this rough mill and then I can pick a tool here these are the tools that I have available to me. I can add a tool from the from the technology database to the live from the library if I want to. And I'll just pick this half inch one here for now and mill. And then it wants a feature. So I need to define what my pocket is, right? So I already had ones that are already created here. So but I'm just going to show you how you would create it. I go here to create a feature for operation based people. Here's where then you want to what do I want to do? I want to make this a pocket. Oh, what do I want to make this? What kind of feature do I want to make? Make this a pocket. I'm going to pick this bottom face. Okay. And then from there, I'm going to go to end condition. And then I'm going to pick a rough and a finish. This doesn't matter right now. I'll leave it as rough and finish. But instead of blind, I'm just going to pick this face. It's going to do up to that face. And when I hit the green check to accept that, okay, and then I go back here. I'm going to go back to this operation tab. And this is where a lot of people are, you're used to picking more stuff in the operation base type programs you're used to picking your depth of cut you know your step over things like that if i hit the green check i get into that area that you're used to so if i click that i get into this and i get here i can pick different tools if i want to okay i can go ahead and adjust my feeds and speeds right here okay so i can do my roughing how i want to with what pattern pocket out is set by default for roughs is the, what it's set just as a default. So any rough mill that you do out of the box when you open your TechDB and when you install it is essentially this pocket out. You can use any of these other ones that are here. You get some nice previews to what you're looking at, okay? Um, so I'll just leave it as pocket out for now. And we have 40% step over. That's set up for, by default, 40% of the tool diameter. Anytime you see a percentage here and I click on it, it'll, percentage of the tool diameter I'm using, 40% of the tool diameter I'm using is 0.2. And I can either toggle between them, change them which one way or the other. Same thing here for my depth of cut. So I'll change this to 60 thousandths. 
okay? And final cut, I'll just make that zero. So something like that. And if I hit preview, I can get a preview of that. Okay, if I don't want to accept that, I can click cancel and it won't, it'll change it back to whatever I have for settings originally here. Okay, and also when we get in here, our rapids are here, our, our finish parameters for, for compensation. And then here it's notice it's recognizing the depth that I picked right here is this eighth inch. If I want to override that, I can and give it less or more. Okay. So this is where you would make your changes. Your entry message is plunge versus ramp. If I want to do spiral, I'll hit preview. We'll see if we get a spiral in there. Okay. So this is how you're normally doing it. Now, if I hit OK there and accept that, notice I've created a rough mill. Okay. And that's what my settings were. So I can easily go from there and I can simulate the toolpath. This is what I'm doing. Okay. And that's where I'm at. So now if I want to create a, a contour mill, I can create off of this one since I've already created the feature. I can generate, right click on this one and then go ahead and generate um, a contour mill. Okay. So these are the steps that that's why you saw so many more steps over or steps in the in the process of programming um, an operation base. Uh, set up because I'm programming, you know, these that you see here individually. So what these strategies allow us to do is allows me to do a rough and a finish right away. So if I go back here and I'll do instead of this pocket, I'll pick um, this irregular pocket row real quick here. Here since I already have a tool path for this one, um, I'm going to right click on this one. I'm going to generate an operation plan, and notice it. It what it does is it kicks me from my feature tree to my operation tree. And here's a rough mill and a contour mill. It based it off that strategy. So it created, looked at the rules and looked at the tools I had for my tool crib and my tool list and said, okay, you got a half inch for a rough, that'll work. And then to finish this off, I'm gonna use an eighth inch. Okay, and notice I have a rough and a contour. So off the same feature. So this one, I could create another one, but again, I would have to create a contour. So I would go here um, for operation-based settings or operation-based type of setup. I go here to contour mill, or you can even, some of them have it where you can copy the operation, those kind of things, and then modify whatever you're doing. Um, like you can copy the rough, turn it into a contour, and then have change the settings so it works like a contour uh, machining process. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this tool. I already have the feature picked because I selected the, the rough one, so it already had this feature selected, so it knows what the shape is. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit, the green check mark and it's gonna take me to it's gonna take me to here where I can change my my tools. This is where I can change my parameters that you guys are used to. Um again here's my feeds and speeds. Um which I can change them here per operation. Everything inside the SolidWorks Cam and Camworks when you first open it up and start using it, all your feeds and speeds are based off of the material selection of inside um inside the system so when i define whatever stock i am inside hours camera cameras it's going to default to the library that's just the way the technology base the uh, technology database is set up uh, i can change this per operation okay where if i turn this on notice now i get availability to these okay and then also i can also do it per tool which we control inside the the, the library inside inside, inside the uh, technology database library so that's why these are grayed out, but I can change that and link it to speeds and speeds for the tool and then also for the tool and all the material we're using as well. Okay, so that's the reason why those are grayed out. Um, or I can do it again per operation, just this, this, this one here I'm doing. Okay, and then also the other things I can do, I can do my cuts, you know, I can do um, uh, climb versus conventional over here. You can do your planes, you can also, Notice it's recognizing, or I picked that, so it's recognized the depth of that. Your lead in, lead out, you can do the same thing here, okay, and change that if you want to. So I'm gonna go ahead and say okay. And for this one, I'm just gonna, since it's out of order, I'm just gonna drag it up to here, just so it's below the same the same operation that we're talking about here, and just generate the tool path real quick. Okay, so, so we have a rough mill, and then this other one, oop, I, I did the wrong one, my bad. Let me grab this one here. Let me go ahead and generate toolpath on that one. So we have a, a rough mill and then a finished mill here for the contour. And then I'll go ahead and run during toolpath real quick. 
for this irregular, and then here's my contour for that one. Okay, so that's where you're doing you're doing the same thing here, but it's taking you a lot more time to do that. That's where even the auto feature recognition is faster, but even programming from the feature side is even faster because I can pick this pocket and tell it to be a rough and a and a mill. I mean, sorry, a rough and a finish right away, um, and then it'll create those operations for me automatically versus creating one and then creating the next one and then changing my 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 strategies or changing my information that I want to do for my settings for that based on that. So what we see here is um, if I go ahead and click any of these and I go to this one here, this rectangular one, uh, sorry, this irregular one, which is this one over here, notice it found the dashed lines are telling me that's an open, open, for, open face. Same thing if we do over here, let's know it's an open face. When we program manually or interactively, we need to make sure we tell we need to tell that that needs to be that way. Um, when I, because if I call it a pocket, notice I picked a rectangular slot. But if I told it to be a pocket, it would treat it just like a pocket, all close in lines. But it's smart enough to recognize it's an open face, so it made it a slot. Okay, so then it would go past, because then it could go past this this face. So that's things we have to watch if we're interactively programming as well. Okay, so let's talk about a little bit about the rules and, and things that are in here. So when I get in here and I want to program anything, it found me in my drills and it found everything that you see here. So I'm just going to go ahead and generate all the plans for it. And I'll go ahead and share regenerate. I'll re just so everything it regenerates everything. And that kicks me to my, from here and it kicks me to my tree, okay? And then what it'll do is I can go ahead and generate my tool pass. And what we'll see is we have our different tool pass here. And I can, modify the order by dropping and dragging just however I want. I can also right click and, and sort the order and sort the operations by, by tool diameter or by, by um, um, operation type if I want to, to do this or maybe make simple just to drop and drag, I can do that. Okay, um, so when we get into the rules, let's talk about the technology database. So what we have here is when we get into features under strategies inside the technology database, um, we have different rules based on different features. Okay, so I'll just go to a rectangular pocket. So by default, my rectangular pocket for that feature, so rectangular pocket feature, a strategy I have set for a default is a rough, rough rest finish. So a rough, rough rest, well, if you look down here, we have a rough mill, and based on the largest inscribed circle, so of the features of the largest circle, you can fit inside that feature. We're saying, times 0 0.4. So what we're doing over here, if we move, follow my cursor here, right here, largest inscribed circle, and then we have times, we have other things we can do, divide plus, this is where I can set up my rules, and then here's where it's picking that. Okay, that's where that is. So it's gonna find a larger tool, the larger the number it is, the larger tool it'll find that fits, and then from there, it'll go ahead and, and find that tool. So if we look at the second rough, over here in our um, operation. So we have this as our first op, this is our second op for this strategy. Notice what I'll have is I have a smaller number here. So it's gonna find a smaller tool for me to go ahead and finish the rest off, you know, and from there. And then for the contour mill, we're gonna go ahead and instead of now the largest stripe circle, we're doing a finish radius. And we're looking at whatever the radius is inside that pocket to get it finished based on a, on a constant here that we're telling it that we want it to find, okay? And we're telling it to use an end mill, okay, for a tool type. And then also with our, when we, when we see our different items, so that's a rough mill, rough mill. So any of these I can change and this is the rough, rough rest, okay? And any of the other criteria we were talking about, if I hit this operation parameters and hit this little menu here, little tablet. This brings up the stuff I see inside when I want to modify, um, when I want to modify my operations when I'm programming inside SolidWorks Gamma Cameras. So here's are my different tabs that you see at the top, my feeds and speed tab, my contour tab, and see that that's what you see when you go into, when I go and enter the contour here. Here's my tabs, tool, feeds and speeds, contour, 
because you're that's what you're seeing and you're controlling right in the technology database you're controlling that tab here okay so if i want to from there on out i want to not do library i want to do operation and i want to change it per each operation i can tell it to be that way and hit save and tell it to do that okay same thing with lead in lead outs okay um i have a lead in lead out and then what i can do is then i can then tell instead of arc i want it to be perpendicular to that and then so any further contrary than that will allow me to set that up once i hit save it'll then do that everything's set up at arc 52 percent and then the five percent you see here for an overlap um out of the box but this is where you can change these things here and do what you want based on what you machine at okay the other thing i want to show you here real quick is if i want to change this to it i don't want to do a rough rough rest i want to most people do a rough and a finish unless it's a really big part that's a really big piece you're all getting on a lot of material at once you want to evacuate some chips quickly that's this is your this is your boss right here um if i want to do a rough and a finish i could make that one my actual um rough and finish but notice when i change that here in the tech db I can now have access to the operations and the strategies and that strategy I want to change if I want to modify anything. Okay. And notice here, feature condition, um, I'm at a blind one because the, the pocket I pick is a blind one. But notice we have different settings for through as well versus a blind pocket. Okay. We can also link it. Right now we have it, it defaults to all material. Um, I could change this to specific materials if I want to, to run certain ways, okay? But if I wanna make this one my strategy or my default strategy, I can change it in here by hitting this tab and go ahead and then picking rough and finish, clicking edit, and then picking this as my default and hitting the green check or hitting the, the box here to save. Okay, that's one way to do it, okay? But I'm gonna close this real quick inside here we have better ways to do that if i go back to my mill tab and it always defaults to the mill in your your technology database because um camworks was a mill mill program first so it always defaults to the mill before it defaults to the uh anything else that you see here so i can also create defaults or create a default strategy scheme or a type of strategy list so notice out of the box it comes with this default one that's loaded here um, it's name default. You can change the name to whatever you want or create another one, which I did. And then you can change your strategies in here of what you want to do differently. So for my Haas VF3 that I created in here, for and I just named it the same as the machine. You can name it whatever you want. Um, I changed all my pockets and everything to a rough finish instead of a rough, rough rest. And if I want for a larger pocket, it ends up being and I want to modify it to a rough, rough rest, I can when I'm programming the part. But as at a default, it's gonna pick this, okay? And you can also create your machines in here. So I go a little farther with that. So usually you have mill inch, you have these here, and I added a Haas VF3 as well um, to go with that strategy. But if I click on this then, here's my machine name and, and that is my default. It's gonna always pick that when I wanna program a part. It's gonna pick my post processor at a default. So essentially I just need to, from now on, when I program a part, it's gonna to default to the Haas. And if I wanna change any of this stuff, I can. And notice it goes to my, I have a link to my Haas tool list I created. And then also, um, oh, sorry. And right here is my default strategies. Instead of the default one, it has the Haas one I created that I made active. And made, and once if you make any changes, it don't want you to save it and kind of go from there. Okay, let me just minimize this for right now and close this. So that's the reason why it's picking what it's picking. It's selecting a rough finish because I have that as my default from there. And how to check that is other than the machine you have, there is a default strategies button up here under my CamWorks tab or my SolidWorks Cam tab. It'll be here. And then here's the one that's active, the default one here. If I want to change it, I can change it to the other default one if I want to, okay? And if I wanna individually change these, so before I ran this or even now, I'm a feature tree, if I wanna say that I deem this as a larger pocket, okay? Yeah, I wanna really hog that material out. Um, uh, I'll go this one here. 
I really want to hog that out. I want to change that. I can actually go to just this one alone and change this from a rough finish to a rough, rough rest and then rerun my operations into a pass for that one if I just want to do that one individually. Okay. And of course, when we get into drilling and things like that, um, we get a technology database. Of course, we're, when we drill, it's a little different. So I'm going to go to mill and I'm going to go to features and operations. And I'm going to set on hole. And notice drill, drill is picked the first strategy. There's other ones in here for bore, for ream, for thread, and drill only. So for drill, the strategy is created by default is a center drill drill operation, which is pretty common. Um, so we'll see that for a drill, we're going down a certain depth. So here's for our drill, we're telling it to use a center drill. So if you wanted to use a different tool, you could tell it to use a drill or whatever you have, something different, and it would pick that. But from there, we're telling it for diameter plus this amount, okay? And then for a depth, we're telling to only go down what you see here. Oh, sorry, right here. Okay, so then from there, if I go to drill, that one's gonna be a little different because we're gonna use a drill for a tool, of course, but then we're gonna be plus nothing because we want it right on because it's a drill, okay? And then if we wanna add tip length, we can add that here. And this will add it by default. If you click it here, you're changing it in the tech DB, not just an individual um, operation, but you're changing it in the, in the tech DB, okay? And then there is also a drill only in here as well for holes, which if, if you notice, it's just a drill. It's not a center drill drill. So you could create a drill strategy, a center drill drill, and then a counter countersink if you wanted to. And you would add another operation. We could go, we go, you know, go to the drill one. It, it notice there's two here. So I'd want to maybe copy from that one. So I could go here and I could then go from here. And I, what I'll do is make a copy of that one and I'll edit that one. And we'll do, you know, drill. Um, and we'll do. Okay, and I'll put that in here. Then when I go back to here, I can then add a new, and I wanna pick this one, because I want it to go next. So then we can do, and I can go in here, and I can actually do a color sync and add that as a, add that to there, okay? And now I have a, for what we see here, is if I go drill counter sync, See what I did there? I added to the wrong one. So if I go back here to do my drill, I gotta be more careful where I'm at. So here I had this counter sink, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that one quick. Yep, okay. Now I'll make sure this is active. So I'll go drill counter sink, and I'll click on this one, and I'll say new, I'll go counter sink, and now we have the correct one, okay? So that's how you can add here. You can also copy from, when you're, when you're programming a part, you can also, do that from when you're programming a part. So if you like this drill and you do add a countersink after you could grab those, you could, you know, you could then grab that feature and program it from the or save it back to you. So like I'll pick this one here. If I right click here, I can go ahead and save operation. And this kind of does the same thing. I can create a new one. Here's all the ones I have in here. Here's the drill countersink I just created. I can go ahead and click new. And we'll do the new, new drill, whatever you want to call it. And then you can save that back into the tech TV that way as well. And whatever, whatever operations are linked to that feature at the time, this hole, it'll copy those, those three strategies. If I had a, a countersink drill and then, a, and then, a, um, sorry, and, um, if it had a, if it actually had, um, yeah, it actually had a drill and a countersink to it, it would actually grab both of those and put those in there, whatever you wanted to call it, okay? So the automation, and then of course the automation part, you don't have to use the automation. I recommend using the automation because we're not picking pockets, hole slots. We're not doing all that kind of stuff from there. Um, but just if we create from the feature base side, we create our features first, we get more control and we can go ahead and 
when we create a feature, we can go here. And remember, when I do this, I can go to my end condition, I get more, I can create two features at once or whatever I'm having here for, actually, it's not two features, uh, two operations at once or this one, they actually create three operations at once. I don't know, I already have one created for this, but I'll go ahead and create another one. And now we have where we can create three ops on that because of the strategies we have created. And of course, everything's customizable. So even if you have a rough and a finish, so if I wanted to edit the rough and the finish and I want my percent step over um, like this for, let's grab, not that one, this rough here. So for this rough, I want to change it from a plunge. So instead of here, instead of plunge, I want to make this a spiral. Oops, spiral, okay. Okay, and then from there, notice this is linked to a rectangular slot. Okay, so I can say specifically for rectangular slots or irregular uh, pocket features, those kind of things. So when I go back here, okay, I can rectangular slot, I can save that back here as an operation plan. It'll save that spiral um, setting, or I can go right to the tech DB. And I can go to features and operations, and I can go to uh, rectangular slot, and then not for the rough and finish, but for the rough, the rough, rough, not for the rough, rough rest, but for the rough finish. Okay, for this rough, I can go in here, and for roughing, oh no, I want that one. I want the um, this one. I can change this to a spiral. And then it's changed now for a blind rectangular slot that's going to do a, a spiral for, for the rough. Okay. All right. So just how fast we can program apart, how quick we can program apart. Um, you're much better off, you know, um, I think using feature base because you're able to create your strategy, you're able to create your, your, your settings that you want to. And then you let the automation help you do most of the work. Sometimes they can do all the work for you as well uh, from that much faster. And you know, being in a CAD and CAM or in um, system where your parts and you're in the same one. Of course, when I go here and this one here, I want to change the depth of this. Um, if you get it from, if you're doing the design work or whatever you're doing, we change the depth of that. And I go back into my CAM. Any of my cam buttons, it's going to want to rebuild. So I'll let it rebuild, and we'll see now that this rough here, ooh, as a matter of fact, so, uh, is it rough here? Yeah, on this one. So now we're at a different depth based on that. So I don't like that. I'm going to go in here real quick and change the depth of cut. And for this, instead of 50% of the tool diameter, I'm going to change this at an eighth of an inch. Yeah, eighth of an inch. In this bottom, I'll go ahead and change this at zero. And then uh, right here, and hit preview, or something like that. And I, that's what I want. There we go. Okay. So when there's a cat change, Cam is aware of it. And you can make those settings up here in your options, how you want to do that when you want to do an update. You can prompt it to open when you open a file so if you're if you're the programmer and you're not doing the designing and you want to open it up to know whether or not things have been changed the last time you programmed it um that can be done right away when you open it if you want to turn that off anytime you go and hit the selection tree so i hit any of these buttons here or any of these buttons up in the command manager for cam it's going to want to rebuild and then uh, and then also uh, if i change anything on the stock it'll want to rebuild Okay, you can rebuild. So you control what you want to, how you want to control this for sure. Okay. All right. So that's what I have for now. I guess if you open up any, any questions, let's kind of go there. Excellent, Don. Uh, thank you very much. I've been keeping tabs on the question and answer panel. I haven't seen anything come through yet, but I
but I will say once we uh, kind of open it up, I expect a few questions here. Sure. nothing yet okay there we go sorry sorry everyone for the delay my question panel was all compressed and i could see questions but i couldn't read any of the questions so i'm going to fire one of these over to you don so you should be able to see this first one okay let me see that way i, I won't screw it up by trying to read it okay Let's see here, questions. Oh, I'm the wrong. Okay, I got her. Um, yes, uh, every is, or uh, I just read the question and said yes. <laughs> Anyways, I'll read the question. <laughs> Everything that you are currently demoing is available on an out of box cam. Yes, correct. Everything I showed you today is available in SolidWorks cam standard. And anything up past there. So we have SolidWorks Cam Standard, and then it gets into SolidWorks Cam Pro. And then here, let me just show you here real quick. Um, so let me just drag this over here. So yeah, so what I showed you today, um, let me just minimize, this is in my way. Um, so everybody see this. So what I showed you today was stuff in the technology database that is available in SolidWorks Cam Pro and any of the versions of SolidWorks Cam Professional, or sorry, SolidWorks Cam Standard uh, is everything I showed you today, what I showed you for changing anything or modifying anything, that's all included in SolidWorks Cam Standard. And then that follows suit all the way through of same modifications you can make to anything that's inside the CamWorks environment as well. Remember SolidWorks Cam is powered by CamWorks, so your user interfaces are the same. It's just your, essentially your, uh, functionalities uh, increase by the different level of packages that you have. Excellent, a couple more came through. These are these are easy enough where I can read them off and not screw it up. So okay. uh, the next one in line, is it possible to import the settings from computer to computer? Yes, if you want to, um, or you're saying, yeah, so if you want to push, um, your settings your technology database settings to another person you would just want to share your technology database to them so essentially if i go back here and i go to tools and i go to tech db in here i'll go to settings and then you would want to share and what, what people do too once they get it set up the way they want to or whatever it is what they do is they then share in on a like mine's this is where it's located right here so this is where the the solver or the camworks one is the, the solver's ones solver's cam is something similar but a little bit different but a solver's cam tech db is different than the camworks tech db so if you have one or the other um you can share both uh it doesn't matter it depends on what you're doing but the tech db you can go ahead and then put this on the m drive or whatever server you want and point it to, and people can point it that way. Um, and then you can do that. The other, let me just minimize this real quick so I can see this. So we can, you can go ahead and put this on a server location and then someone would then open theirs up and they would go ahead and import that in and you would then browse to wherever that is. And then you could go ahead and, and do that, um, browse in there. And then you would, once you found it, this would become available. So if I browse to, um, where mine's located is C, uh, Camworks Data 2022, um, TechDB. So like some of these I have for different, so I'm gonna pick this one, or I'll pick that one. I can open that and now I can import it. Okay, so that's how you can do it. And then it'll, it'll want you to create a backup just in case you know, something goes, if something goes haywire when you're doing it. These settings here where it says save settings, is per is settings of how your tech db looks to you essentially functional save customized settings of a column and visibility or location so what they're talking about if you want to save your settings 
is if I get into um, like mill tools and I click on flat end mills, I can move these orders around, okay? Or just by dropping and dragging them. And I also can turn off columns here. So if I customize this and now anyway, maybe I only wanna show four of these and I just have four checked. When you get to this button here for save settings, that's what it's talking about, the things you customize in your, inside your, um, inside your columns and things like that for your, right here, your grid and your column visibility, that's the kind of thing. But to import, yeah, that's what you can do is just import and then it'll, it'll go ahead and say success, successful and kind of, kind of go from there. And, and now if you notice in 2022, we have multiple tech DBs that we can do, uh, that we can have in here. That's new in 2022. Okay, next one. Sounds pretty easy to do then to, yeah. to get those yep. settings across. Uh, next, in, uh, oops, sorry, Don, didn't mean to cut you off. Nope, that's fine. Uh, next one in line, and then there's a couple I'll send over to you because they're getting getting a little bit more involved, but how is the WCS get set? Oh. Okay, let's open up part real quick. So by default, you're at the mercy, by default, you're at the mercy of whatever, whoever modeled this part. I was a nice chap and modeled the part with X, Y, and Z, like I kind of want to set it down on the table. I'm going to set this down on my table and I'm going to put it in a vice or, or fixture it to the table by clamps or whatever I'm going to do. This is my Z location, okay? In the real world, if I hit, iso, if I hit the, the isometric here inside SolidWorks, every, Normally, to do that, you would you would draw, you would need to draw your part then, or start my main sketch of the part on the front plane. Some people don't do that; they start it on the top plane. So if that happens, you can then modify this however you want in your work coordinate system. So if I go back here, so by default, your it'll it'll go to what the SolidWorks to answer the question. It'll go to the SolidWorks coordinate system that you see here. Okay, so this one, yeah, it worked, right? Because I knew that that's what I wanted. But if you get people that are modeling, you can't control that. When you go into your coordinate system here under your feature tree, you can edit that definition. And say I wanna machine this part like so. And this one, I want this as my Z, okay? I can then go in here and then modify by using edges or I can even use planes. So I really want to come off of this corner or maybe in the center of this right here. Oop. Uh, let me clear that real quick. I'm going to pick that right there. So, but I needed my Z up and so forth. So my X is in my right direction, but my Y is not. So I'm going to pick my Y, pick this edge. Okay, and then I'm going to flip it and we'll see now we have something like that. Okay, uh, th then that's now I hit, okay, hit the green check. Now that now is my coordinate system is that and we don't have to worry about this one. If you don't change anything, it'll always default to whatever this is. If I don't, didn't do what I did here, it'll default to your solar squared system. Hey, Don, okay. as, as a, you know, me, a SolidWorks user, could, does the SolidWorks coordinate system, like if you defined a new reference coordinate system, is that something that could be used as opposed to the SolidWorks origin or must it be created inside so nope. you know, we can do it. So we can do that too. So we can go here. Okay. And we can edit here, and I right from here I can create one. Okay. Cool. Right from here, or 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 I can and I name it whatever I want. Okay. Or I can go into my uh, features, and I can create one here as well, and name it name it whatever I wanted here. So I can use both because it's going to put it in my tree. It's going to put it down here and in, into my my feature tree for cam or sorry, for CAD and I can pick it and, and pick it. So I, two ways, I can do it right in this location here. I can edit and create SolidWorks coordinate system here where the same thing is going up here and clicking here. Or again, if I close this, if I do it right in my feature and I go right here and I can create this one too here as well. Yep. So it sounds pretty darn flexible or it yep. is pretty yep. darn flexible. Yep. And then you would just pick the coordinate system as your, whatever you set here, you'd pick that for your, for your WCS, you would pick that as your coordinate system then. Mm -hmm. 
Excellent. Uh, I'm going to send this next one over to you. This is a bit of a lo longer question. I'm, I'll screw it up, I guarantee. Okay. And, uh, you know, some of these, we're getting a little bit pretty detailed questions. We may have to answer these offline. Thankfully, go to webinar, like all of your questions and who asked them, it does record them so we can easily get back to you if we're not able to get to them all. Okay. So if I do other screens, that's really good. Yeah, I don't know if that if that question is something that's an easy answer, Don, or if it's going to be a little bit more, Which more one is difficult that? to go through. Uh, one just setting over any difference with the automatic setup with respect to routers, like a Z0 is the spoil board, not the top of the part. Yeah, so you could do, so if you wanted to do a spoil board, what I would recommend doing and remember, you have the beauty of templates as of SolidWorks templates. Um, so you can, what I would do is come in here and go ahead and create a sketch. Okay, I'll go back to where we're at here. I'm going to say this is my X direction and positive, and this is my Y direction going this way, and Z is up. I'm going to go ahead and, if you wanted to create, I'm just going to create a rectangle real quick. I could just create a line, whatever I wanted to as well, but I'm going to create a rectangle. Uh, corner in, and I'm going to just do something something like that and then I'm going to go ahead and get normal too and then you could then uh, where did I put my sketch okay yeah where did it go um, let me just minimize this this is in my way I saw you draw it. <laughs> I thought I did. Let me try that again. Let me just do this again here. So I'll go here and I'll start a new sketch. Then I'll go here to rectangle. Okay. Maybe I click too fast. Uh, it happens. So I'm going to say maybe I'm always a half inch from there. And I'm always a half inch from there. Okay. Something like that. And then... You can make this maybe what you're supposed to say your spoiler board 60 by 96, something like that. Okay, and I zoom out here, something like that. You can put this as a, um, you know, of course you can make this a, you can make this reference lines if you want to, whatever you want to do. But then here, if I make sure that is visible, yep, sketches are invisible. And then when I when I program, I go over here to program. I can then, in my coordinate system, um, where is that not showing up? Um, there, okay. So then I can go down here and I can pick an entity. Uh, nope, I have an edge pick, so I need to get rid of that. I gotta pick inside the box here. Make sure you have a blue selection box. And I'll pick this. And if I need to flip this one way or the other, I can, but by picking edges or whatever I do. If you don't have edges, you also can pick, like say it's a, this is pretty simple part, but I can also pick reference planes. So if I want my Z to be, you know, different the other way, I could actually, for my Z, I'm gonna pick whatever is perpendicular to the way I wanna go. So if I pick Z, I can then flip it, okay? If I need to, if I don't have any straight, lines or edges to pick like a sketch or, um, and I was picking these edges to manipulate these in his boxes. If I have a sketch, I could pick a sketch line or, you know, it works the same as an edge. But then I gotta have something like this inside there, okay? And then you could actually save this, save and make yourself a cam, a cam template um, if you want to, and then have that, this sketch in here all the time, and then rename this, you know, spoiler board sketch, whatever you want. Okay. So then my coordinate system should be that now. Good deal. Mm -hmm. uh, 
one of the questions I got back to the uh, the person that asked it, maybe we need a little bit more information, uh, but this one should be an easy one. You know, what is the extent of the five axis capabilities? You know, is it only indexed or is it, you know, quote unquote, true five axis? So, so let me sh show you this. So, so back to our matrix here. So four and five axis indexing. So that's pre-positioning, indexing, three plus two machining is only included in the Sowers Camp Pro. If you want to do full five axis simultaneous, that gets you into CamWorks Premium. So it all depends. So, and then, so all the way up to this point, up to premium, so anything after, so say if you want to Sowers or Cam, CamWorks Standard or CamWorks Milling Standard, you know, this one and these, that would include four and five axis indexing in all of these here. Um, because it rolls, everything rolls into each other. But then if you wanted the true five axis simultaneous, you would need to do premium. All right, that seems to cover that one. Um, so I'm gonna kind of wrap these into two because they're both asking about uh, mm -hmm. a mill and, and a millitronic. So one is how hard is it to program for something like, like a Mazak? machine but also to use it in a millitronics and then the other is they have a Haas vertical and a millitronics mm -hmm. vertical we're talking about how do they get the source file you know the, for the specific machine is it a g-code file download something like that yeah so what you can do um here is these are um these are the ones that come with the software so there's, there's some mazax in here and then Miltronics, it all depends on what's on a Miltronics. As far as in these, what you see here are controller names. So it depends on what controller is on that Miltronics if it's in here. The same thing for churning. Okay. And then there are, we do, you know, we do write custom posts as well. And then also there is, um, there is a location where you can download them from the Camworks website as well. Um, if you, if the ones that are, you see here some other ones as well but yes so those and those are like the ones that they mentioned those um you, you can check that for the ones if they're not if you don't see that here and then where you would go is if i go to cam works and then under here there's a under support there's a post processor library and then you know there's some in here that you can download as well So another example, it looks like there are a ton of options. Yes, all kinds of options, yes. Yeah. Well, fantastic. Thank you for going through all those questions so thoroughly, Don. I think we have every single one of them covered. Okay. Um, but I will, you know, I will also say to, to all the attendees, everybody's still hanging on with us. Uh, if I missed one, it is, uh, by accident, I'm not doing it on purpose, but I'll send my email out through the chat. So if anything comes up after, you know, please send it in and we'll make sure to get your question answered. For sure. Uh, but I think, you know, now that we're almost at the top of the hour, we've answered all the questions. I think we'll wrap it up today, Don. So thank you so much for going through that. Thank you for answering all the questions. Thank you for all the attendees for joining us. I think we'll sign off for the day. So everyone, again, thank you. Have a have a great day and, and see you soon. Okay. Thanks, everyone.